week's heat wave impacting rail travel in the region will not slow down trains because of track temperatures. Yeah, and earlier this week we saw the video inside of an Amtrak train that lost power in that tunnel in Baltimore without air conditioning, mind you. David Capital is live at Northwest DC with more on what, uh, David, some people are calling a new reality. Yeah, Jim, I talked to a couple of experts today, and that is sort of what they are telling me, especially because the temperatures are this hot and we are living in a world that is getting a little bit warmer every year. I spoke to a few experts who said that, look, transit systems are built for certain temperatures. So one in Ontario, Canada is going to be built a little bit differently than one in, say, Miami, Florida. When temperatures go above what a system is built for, I'm told that's when some problems pop up. Right now, we'll Mata says if the track temperature gets to 135 degrees here outside, they are slowing the trains down to 35 mile an hour, which can help reduce deformities that might happen as a result of the track expanding because of the heat. They say that this has led to relatively minimal delays. I talked to some riders downtown who said they were more focused on not feeling as cool and comfortable on some of the train cars as they'd like, especially when they're packed. I was fine, just a little hot, you know. I'm in shorts and t-shirts. I felt worse for the people wearing, like, business clothes. In those hours in the morning when I'm commuting to work and it's extremely crowded, it can definitely get very claustrophobic and sweaty in there as we're all kind of squishing in the car. Some of the technology we're using on rail networks in North America dates from the 20s and the 40s. I think we should understand that. So, yes, it, it has to be brought up to date, but there's a cost to that. That is Timothy Borchers. He's a light rail expert for a company called National Transit Services based in Florida. He says some other countries have built their systems anticipating hotter climates, but said he's consulted on a project in Italy, for example, where they are literally spray painting part of the rails white to help deflect some of the heat. He says trains are heavier and faster and the electrical components more sophisticated. So if there is excessive heat, those systems face greater stress. And with a rise in temperatures, we could see more hot days, therefore potentially more issues, especially because of older railways. I know it's annoying to passengers. It's more and more annoying to the rail networks because they miss connections, the signals don't align anymore, and they don't have the rolling stock available for the next service. So it really is causing issues. But it really needs money, a whole lot of money. And so, again, some countries invest more in light rail and the technology than Borcher says the United States has in the last couple of decades. And one final note, WMATA again says delays have been minimal and they are also inspecting the tracks constantly to make sure they're okay with the heat. Guys.